Hello, Mountie community. I'm your host, Vincenzo Frangioni on Mountie Pride Presents, and today we are with ACAA champion, two-year starter, James French. Hello, James. How you doing today, man? Good, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Got it. 28 the other night, was it, against Crandall? Yeah, it was, it was a good night, for sure. Yeah, I heard you were hitting it all over the floor, from well, the three, baseline, midi. Yeah, no, it was good. Definitely feeling it, and the boys were doing a good job getting me the ball and setting me some good screens, so awesome, it was good. Man. Good team well, win. Well, okay, um, we're going to start off. When did you start playing basketball, and who was your greatest influence to get into the sport? I started playing when I was probably about five or six on the puppies team. It was like a, the local kids team, um, and I kind of just did that as a way um, just to kind of get rid of some energy. As a kid, I was always kind of tall, loved to run around the house, and my dad was kind of looking for, for activities. Mm -hmm. So he signed me up for basketball, and it just kind of took off from there, really. Okay. I would also say I think my biggest influence – so now I would say it's LeBron. I love LeBron, but back then it was actually Chris Bosh when he played for the Raptors. You're a Chris, uh, Chris Bosh man? When I was young, yeah, I used to love him for some reason. So You kind of emulate his game, just a tall guy that kind of like does it all yeah, on the court. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So as a kid, you know, in the Raptors, the, the Toronto or the uh, Raptors mascot, you know, I used to have like a little uh, action figure there, and I used to love playing with that. So. so, James, what like teams did you play on growing up, and what was your high school career like to lead you here to Mount A? Well, I played on a lot of the Team New Brunswick teams. So mm -hmm. I played U14, U15, and then I played U17 twice. Mm -hmm. And all four times I actually played with uh, Brett and Aram. Oh. So that's kind of how I got to know those guys. Uh, U14, there was a camp. It was like the top 40 players of New Brunswick in grade 8. And that's kind of where we, we met, the three of us. I already knew Aram beforehand, but not Brett. Um, and then once we started playing together, um, luckily we played together ever since, really. So yeah, that was great. Actually, those are your roommates now, right? Yeah, yeah, so that's so that's cool. great. Um, and then in terms of the high school team, I actually played with uh, E-Man Octavius and Alex Duell as well, oh, okay. who are both Mounties here. Um, when I was in grade 12, they were in grade 10. So um, and we had some great success in that year. We won two tournaments. Um, so it's great to be able to play with those guys again. Oh, man, that's quite a story. What was it like when they, like, showed up here and you were just like, wow, I played with these guys when, like, I was the top dog in high school. Now you're still the top dog. Yeah. They're coming in as Thanks. young guys. No, it was – It's. All, I love seeing those guys around, especially, you know, E-Man. He's such, such a – for everybody who knows E-Man, I'm sure they'd be able to say the same thing. He's a great guy, mm -hmm. works hard, and he's a great passer. Mm -hmm. And then Alex Duell is a great shooter. And he actually went to Kings last year. Oh, okay. um, and we spoke a few times this summer, and he got in contact with Chapman, was actually able to come down here. So it was great to see that, and I love playing with those guys. So you're not just helping the team on the court. You're helping them off the court by recruiting guys. Is yeah, that what you're yeah, trying I to you could, yeah, I guess you could say that. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Um, I got to ask. So a guy like you, how tall are you? Probably like 6'5". Six, 6'5". Five. Six, five, shoot the basketball, pass it well, set screens. You obviously have an IQ. Like, what were your offers other than Mount A? Like, what, like, kind of, what made you want to come here? You clearly seem like a good basketball player, and you could have played at other schools. But what made you come here? Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, I think I would definitely say um, just being close to home. So I'm from Moncton, so mm. not very far. I've always kind of been a family family guy. So mm. um, for me, being having my family close and being able to come watch the game was big. Mm. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Chapman actually coached me for two years in high school. So before he was the coach for Mount A, he coached me in grade 10 and 11. And then in my grade 12 year, he left and coached here. So I already had that connection with uh, Chap. Mm. So basically, it was kind of a no-brainer early on. I was like, you know what, I know the coach. Um, it's close to home, gr good school academically. Mm. And also, I think a lot of young guys, too, you know, when they're trying to go to the next level, they're, they get offers from, you know, bigger schools, and it's tempting, and it's, it's great. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're sitting on the bench for a couple of years, you know, you, it's not, not really what I wanted to do. I wanted to come and, you know, be able to have an impact right away and help out the team. Mm -hmm. So I thought Mount A was going to be a good fit for that, and it turned out great. Okay. Man, that's awesome, actually. What a general, like, good story. You and Chap having that relationship together. Well, yeah. how has your experience been so far at Mount A? I know you got the rings. I know you got the accolades, the starting. But how has it been for you personally? Amazing. I wouldn't trade it for the world, man. I love this school to death. I thought it was great. You know, um, the football guys, you guys have been great showing us support. Mm -hmm. Um, well, and, thank you. Yeah, thank and, you. you know, vice versa. I think that's what I love about this school is everybody's just kind of on the same page, trying to have a good time, supporting each other. Um, so it's really been awesome. I wouldn't change it or trade it for anything. Oh, well, well, this question, the next one's going to be a bit more personal. I know we talked about you brought up Brett and Aram and, like, all those guys. But now, like, you live with them now. So how is that, like, you three getting – and you obviously uh, – Aram was ACAA All-Star. Brett's been a consistent starter. And yeah. then you're just James French. Cool. How has that been, like, just – 
going up with those guys up to this moment, get, winning a championship, together, I couldn't imagine. I would love to win a championship with like my best friends as well. That'd be sick. What has it been like? Man, honestly, a dream come true. Like, uh, absolutely, especially with, you know, Brent and Aram. So they were, you know, like, like myself, they were great players on their high school team and they actually both won high school championships. Oh. <laughs> um, Brett actually, I think, won all four years, maybe just three, and then Aram won his grade 10 year. So they all used to, and we were good friends for a while, so they used to always make you know, jokes at me saying, because I, I didn't win one. <laughs> um, so being able to finally win one together was great, and it was something that you know, when we all got recruited here, we knew that Mount A's never won back before, Chapman knew that, and that was kind of like our mission was to, you know, let's get Mount A's first ring. So being able to do that um, you know, with my best friends that I've known for so long was amazing. Man, you could write a movie about that, honestly. That sounds like a, a nice, wholesome movie I'd watch on a Saturday. Awesome. So, if you ever watch ACAA basketball, Holland has clearly been the powerhouse over the year. I don't know, they won consecutive championships. So, I know you guys played them in the finals the year before. It didn't go as well as this one. So, how is it like winning an ACAA championship for the first time in school history, beating Holland, who beat you the year before? Like, what was that feeling like to get that kind of redemption in that moment? It, it was crazy, man. It was it was crazy. It was just really such a wild year last year. You know, we had um, D'Angelo and Mackie and a few other guys, and things just didn't work out. So mm. it was, you know, things changed a lot from the start of the season to the end. Um, but, you know, we stuck stuck to it. And I think one thing that really contributed to our success is, you know, I really can – and I'm sure everybody else on the team would agree that we really consider each other more as brothers than teammates. Mm. Um, so our team chemistry has always been good. So we knew – you know that we all had each other's back going into it um so we just kind of let it all out there and things ended up working out for us and we made some shots and it was it was awesome that was crazy man well now we're gonna get to another question more like what's it been like with you and academics you, you're a pretty smart guy from the way you look honestly <laughs> like, well, from what i've heard the, gla the glasses definitely get it going there but how has it been like a student athlete for you who has to do basketball three four times a week then play twice a week how is that balancing the academics and school well, to be honest, this is a, that's a great question, and I get that quite often just from like other people who are just curious. Um, and I, to be honest, I actually am thankful for basketball because I think having basketball has actually made me a better student. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are surprised when I say that, but I think when you have practice every night at a certain time, you have team lifts and teams film, that puts you in a routine, and it's like, okay, I know I have this to do, t you know, tonight. I can't get work done, so I got to do it before. So I kind of really just kind of treat it as a job where I do my work in the day, practice at night, and then I really use the time after practice to kind of relax and I take that time to be my uh, free time, I guess. So I think really just getting a routine that works for you, um, get, trying to get your work done before practice, not leaving it to the last minute, um, mm. and you'll be, you'll be right, doing good. That's awesome. Honestly, great advice, man. Uh, well, okay, so this is a little segment we have here. It's the random question time. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you've seen it before, we'll give you a random question. James, what is your dream vacation? That's a great question. To be honest, I love traveling, don't get me wrong, but I'm also, you know, I love staying home and just relaxing. So, uh, honestly, I'm not really sure. I think I would like to go somewhere warm mm -hmm. and just kind of relax by the beach and not do a whole lot. To me, just being able to relax, you know, lower those stress levels is – would be great okay, for me. Fine. I think me and you think alike. I'm also would like to relax on a beach. Yeah, somewhere. you know, I'm sim simple guy. Man, <laughs> just simple. All right. Well, James, I know uh, last season you had a bit of a slow start, but then it felt like midway, like through the season, you just picked it up and became one of the best players in the ACAA. Like your versatility to me, your most versatile guy, popping threes, setting screens, your mid range game, low post, drive to the net. You got it all. So, what do you think growing up and like your upbringing made you such a versatile player? Well, I think. Um Definitely my teammates, 100% got to credit the teammates, right? Mm. I wouldn't be able to score if, I, if they didn't pass you the ball. I wouldn't be open if they didn't set me screens. Mm. Um, so playing with great teammates definitely helps. Mm. I think, too, in terms of, like, growing up, I debated if I wanted to share this story, but I thought I would because it's, you yeah, know, maybe cool. motivational for some. Cool but, for so, it, so my name is James French, and when I was in grade 7, um, I actually played for a team with some older guys. It was kind of the first time I played with better players, and uh, they used to call me James Bench because I actually sat on the bench all the time. I didn't get many minutes. And that's still a moment that sticks with me because, you know, I never got injured, thankfully, that way. But uh, that was definitely a hard year. Thank you. That was definitely a hard year for me, and I learned a lot that way. So I think sometimes it's also the hardships that, you know, give you the motivation and the success. Um, and, you know, having great teammates around 
um, as I became older to kind of push me to be better, give me confidence, and all that stuff has, has really helped. Oh, man, kids are ruthless, huh? Like, God, that, that's yeah, just me. Yeah, you know, well, you know. Hey, man, thank, thank them, though, at the end of the day. Oh, they for made sure. you to you play know, obviously, you know. It's, you know, it's funny, you know, I don't have trauma for it or anything like that. And it was, even at, at the time, it wasn't that bad. Mm. But I just thought, you know, every, everybody has their setbacks, and I think it's how, you know, how you react to them that is what makes you come out on top and what makes mm -hmm. you stronger and I thought that was just an example of my career that was kind of a low point for me that I thought you know okay I could take this in as you know I'm really bad at basketball or I could use that as motivation um, and I did so no oh, man for sure well the next question obviously you when you are talking in this interview you're very like how would I say smart have a good mindset you've been very like great to talk to right now but like what is your mindset and work ethic how has that made you a great basketball player? Are you like the type of guy that wakes up at 7 a.m. every day and just grinds? Or like, what makes you, through that part of your life, successful? Again, I think I would say having great teammates, you know, pushing yourselves, you know, living with Brett and Aram, like I said, and, and Zach, and now Minwoo, right? We're all on the same, mm. same team, so being able to talk after practice, use that to motivate each other. Um, Chap does a great job keeping us motivated and uh, allowing us to come into the gym to get extra shots up. So I really think, you know, to be successful, you got to surround yourself with successful people. Mm. And I think that's what we've done here at Mount A. Everybody here works hard. Everybody's on the same page. And really seeing those guys. And now, you know, being a, not necessarily a senior, but a fourth-year player, seeing those younger guys come into the gym working hard, you know, it motivates me to still keep doing that um, because I want to be good for them just because I know they want to be good, you know, for me. So. And we always talk about making a great culture. But, like, even I notice just, like, you're right. The young guys come and they shoot. They look up to guys like you, Brad and Aram, all these older guys. And you guys have created a great culture. And I hope you're proud of what you do when you're out of here and when it's done. Thank you. And it's like, you've done a great job with it. Okay, we're going to get to another question. What does being a Mountie mean to you? You seem like a perfect Mountie person. Yeah. I'm going to sound like most people, you just, like, you love the school. You got... You're hitting all the, these arrows for me, but like, what does being a Mountie mean to you? It means everything. I love it. Uh, you know, I'm, when I say I'm a Mountie, I say that with pride, you know, I think, and I'm sure many of the other athletes would also say the same, you know, there's, you know, when you go to like a bigger school, sometimes, you know, sport teams, they don't communicate with each other as much, you know, you don't really get to know the fans or the community, but I find with Sackville, um, being such a small town, you really do get to know the fans, you get to talk to them afterwards, you know, the lower student, um, population you get to also get to know the students you get to know the fans which just makes it awesome you know being able to play in front of your friends and people you know is just is just great that was and, a beautiful uh, answer yeah so i i, I love it it's uh, it means everything to me awesome well okay we're gonna get to the end of like the segment here you seem like a smart guy also you got your head on your shoulders well like you know what i mean what, what are you gonna do after basketball is over after your career is done at mount a are you going to like pursue a job? Are you going to try and go play in Europe or even other levels? Like, No, I, I think probably, you know, I love Mount A, I love basketball, but once I'm done here, that's probably, you know, it for my playing career at least. Um, I could definitely see myself coaching when I'm older, you know, after a bit of time off, you know, especially like younger, I love working with kids. So, you know, the younger kids, and you know, I think that would be great. Um, in terms of professional career, so I study psychology here. Um, at Mount A, and I plan to, to keep doing that. So hopefully, um, if things keep going well, that I'll be able to move on from Mount A to a different grad school and continue studying psychology. Um, hoping to do stuff with mental health, you know, get back to my community or the community I'm in and um, just keep helping people. Well, man, honestly, James, I didn't realize you're just like such a nice guy, but like, Thank you. it was great it. having the interview today, man. I appreciate you coming up. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. It's been great. All right, Mountie community, my name is Vincenzo Frangioni. This is Mountie Pride Presents. Peace out.